All right, so I want to show you guys today is the process that we went through to reconnect these two pieces of silicone together. So like I said, this is one of my old Pokeball molds that um, had come apart on me. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to recreate it over here on this side. I want to be careful because the other side is actually still curing and I don't want to tear it apart. But we'll go ahead and get this started. So, the first, uh, since this is a fresh tear, then it will actually bond a little bit faster and easier. You guys can see that right there. So the first thing we need to do is we take our poly prep, which is this right here, and we need to coat both sides of the tear with the poly prep. So we're going to do that. I found the easiest way to do this is just to pour a little bit into the cap, like so. And then again, we got our handy dandy chip brush. Wet down the corner of it. And then we're just going to saturate both sides of the cut, like so. Okay. And then we got to give that a couple minutes to dry again. And then we're going to add a second coat of that. Like that. Uh, this is just to kind of help keep the two sides separated while we're waiting for everything to dry. So that way we don't have any issues with uh, no, stuff not getting enough air and then not drying correctly. Okay, so that should do the trick. And add our second coat. And just so you guys know, like I said, the um, other side of this mold right here was also split open about as far. And as you can probably tell, it is now pretty well put back together. Okay, so I'll give that about 30 seconds to let it dry too. We're done with the poly prep, so we're going to go ahead and pour this back into our bottle. And that's done. <clears throat> now, we do have a couple of other pieces here. Uh, we do have a couple of other compounds here that we're probably not going to be using for this particular piece, because I don't think we're going to need it. Uh, this is an activator, it kind of helps everything to go a little bit faster. And um, see, right there it says activator and accelerator. So this is really handy for when you uh, need to get something done really quickly. And then this is a filler for like over here, I probably should have used it. <clears throat> you can see I still have some little gaps here along the edge of the, of the seam. And so what the filler would do is it would actually just fill in those seams. But uh, I actually don't use this mold that often and so I'm not too worried about it. I just want to see how well it worked. And I was impressed and so I figured I'd go ahead and do the other side too. So, so those are the other two things that you would get when you purchase this kit. It comes with four products. So we have the accelerator, the filler, the poly prep, and then this is the SCA. This is a polymer enhanced bonding agent called SI Blue. And it comes with extra caps and uh, squirters and stuff like that. So it's really handy. And so the next thing we're going to do once this finishes drying, we're going to apply this to one side and then push the two sides together. Now, there is a second kit that you can purchase, and it's actually just this one bottle. And it's kind of like everything all mixed into one. And it actually works really well. I just found that you need to let it sit a little bit longer. But I want to show you guys how to use this kit because it's the one that was suggested that we use for this project. So they said that this is really better for like industrial use, whereas that's better for, you know, stuff like this. So just something to keep in mind. And also something else to consider is that that's going to last you a lot longer than this is going to. So, anyways, option B and option A. Cool, and that little rant was just about perfect. So, now that this part's dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take our SCA, which is this right here, take off the cap, like so. We're going to remove our spacer, like so. And we're going to say like so just one more time. Like so. Ah, okay. So what we do with this is we want to coat just one side of the um, mold where we've put the poly prep. And right just along this side like that. Cool. And go ahead and put our cap back on. And then what we have to do is we need to apply some pressure to this for 30 seconds. And that will have the bond go. So I'm going to stand up and watch the camera count down so I can see how long 30 seconds are. Now one thing I forgot to mention is that you do want to apply pressure. So we're not just kind of holding them together, we're kind of pushing them back together. 
and that will help it to form a stronger bond. Focus here. Okay. But, you can see it's now starting to bond back together. Now again, I don't want to apply a ton of pressure to this because this was just freshly done. But this side's been up for about 15 minutes now. And I can't really pull that apart anymore. So, definitely very cool. And this side's going as well. Um, the owner said that when these things bond back together, that's actually like three times stronger than it normally would be. Yeah, you can see that's not pulling apart. So, that is how you bond silicone back together and how you repair tears in silicone and all kinds of things like that. But the name of the company is TechBond, and I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check these out, and specifically this particular set and kit. So like I said, these are the two products that we used in this particular video. And then we had the extra tool, which like I said, is like the accelerator and a filler. So, again, I'm really happy with it. You can see that the stuff does work. It is not pulling apart at all. And that's me actually putting some pressure onto it. So it really uh, is pretty impressive. But that'll do it for me today. I uh, hope you guys found this video to be interesting. Like I said, being able to bond silicones together is actually a really big deal. So I hope you guys are as impressed with that as I am. Just because, you know, super glue doesn't work. I've actually cast molds in super glue using a silicone mold. So like what I did is I just got a whole bunch of, um, of super glue and I just layered it on my silicone mold in order to create kind of a more glossy look and um, it popped right out. The mold didn't work right, but you know, it did pop right out. The super glue will not stick to silicone. And so like I said, being able to do this with these products is something really, really, really cool. And there's like some sciencey stuff behind it too. And I won't bore you guys with that. Just know that this is a really neat product. And so like I said, I'm very, very happy to have my hands on it. Um, so yeah, um, give this video a like, give it a share for all of your buddies who work with silicone because I know that tears are a big deal and it's something that's really, really frustrating, at least to me. And now we have a way to fix them. So, cool stuff. Anyways, uh, like I said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day and I hope you've enjoyed your time in my garage.